And here in the studio with me, I've got Dr. Amal al Marki. So, good evening. Welcome to QF Radio. Thank you, Laura. Good evening. Um, so, well, we'll start with a little bit of a, an introduction to, to who you are and what you do. Sure. Um, I guess I'm many things at the same time. I'm a scholar. I'm a professor. I'm a post-colonialist. I'm a feminist. I'm a passionate writer. I'm a blogger. Um, um, what else? I'm, I'm a lot. <laughs> a lot of things. So true. <laughs> Are you assistant teaching professor as well at Carnegie Mellon University? That's true. And I'm the only Qatari faculty in Education City. I'm a QF achiever. And currently, I'm the executive director of a new initiative in Qatar and uh, Qatar Foundation. Uh, and that is the Translation and Interpreting Institute that will launch hopefully, inshallah, in uh, September 2012. Oh, so project underway. Yes. So, I mean, as you said, you're involved in so so much. Um, I mean, basically, I've got like a press release in front of me because we've come this evening uh, to talk to your lead author as well in a new book that's been released by mm-hmm. Bloomsbury Publishing mm-hmm. um, here through Qatar Foundation, which is Arab Women in Arab News. Yep. Uh, so we're going to be talking about that, but I, I was looking, I got this press release and I was like, what? There's so much I could talk to you about <laughs> outside of the book, you know, because you are a very, very busy lady. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and also, uh, having not, Met you before. You're very young, <laughs> so you know you never you never know uh, what, what you know what to expect. Go think, but um, so welcome to Kirafiri. It's Thank great to you. have Thank you. Thank you for on. having me. Um, so I guess really we should talk about the book. Mm-hmm. Um, so well, let's start with the the title. I guess really mm-hmm. is a good place to start, and just really what what the book is about. Sure. Um, so Arab women and Arab news, old stereotypes and new medium. Let me tell you a bit about uh, the research behind the book. Um, our review of literature indicated that there is uh, 30, some 30 years of research in Western social science finding that Arab women are depicted in Western news as passive and oppressed. Uh, surprise, surprise. When uh, they are portrayed in image bites, they are typically veiled and voiceless uh, with words spoken for them in captions or voiceovers. Uh, the vast majority of this research was conducted prior to 2000 and before the expansion of internet, uh, digital news services, social media and such. So we were interested in asking a new research question, which is how are Arab women represented in their own uh, news? We wanted to ask a research question with both a cultural shift turning from Western to Arab news and a time shift moving from primarily print-based news to news available over the internet especially that the recent uh, availability of mass market Arab news in translation make it po- possible for us to, to ask this question and pursue it. So uh, we present, a me- this book is a media-based coding study followed by a research-based canvassing of Arab women and Arab news. Uh, from, the point of, uh, the view, from the point of view of the coding study, we were able to study the effects of Internet translation services providing immersive experiences in foreign news to readers of uh, another language and culture. Um, and from the point of view of the canvassing study, we discovered that the Arab women who appeared in our sample were often covered in many other news. So we, uh, with the appropriate background uh, research, we could establish a deeper acquaintance with those women. Because, I mean, it's, uh, it's a hefty book. Um, <laughs> I've, I've been having a read through on evenings. I got it a few nights ago, so I haven't had a chance to finish it. Because if you, if you could see it, it's quite a fairly hefty book. Um, <laughs> And obviously, it's, it is quite, an, it's a nice mix as a reader, actually, because I've kind of have flitted in a way from reading some, uh, like, say, the first parts, a bit more mm-hmm. of the kind of factual, the, re- the research kind of yeah. more statistical. And then you've got like a pers- bit more like a, a personal account feel, I guess, towards, you know, the, the end. So it's kind of got this, I have kind of gone from bit to bit mm-hmm. um, when, when my attention can, <laughs> I know what I'm like, I'm not an academic, I can't lie. <laughs> Our listeners, my listeners and callers no, I agree with you. Like the now. second part of the book is my favorite, to say the truth. We started with quantitative methods and then, uh, shifted to qualitative methods, and this is the part that I like about the book. Okay. Oh, good. So, so it's not just me, no. but I mean, it's, it's interesting all the same on both parts. But, um, yeah. And um, so there's, there's quite a few, uh, well, there's a few authors, your lead author on, mm-hmm. on the book. And, I mean, as a lead author, what does, what does that mean that, that you kind of did? Did you take charge of the project? Did you kind of, or, or how, how does it work as being a lead author? Well, I came up with the idea. The, the idea emerged like years ago before I did my PhD, and it was a topic that I wanted to pursue back then, but couldn't for so many reasons. Mm-hmm. So um, then uh, years afterwards, um, my mentor, who is the former head of English in, in Carnegie Mellon, uh, Pittsburgh, um, actually uh, pushed me to pursue this question. And we, um, in terms of funding, um, we, we wrote a, a proposal for Qatar National Research Fund, and we were granted an NPRP 
in its first cycle. So we were granted the grant to investigate Arab women and, and uh, Arab media. Um, this research has resulted in a couple of published papers, conference papers, and this book that was the icing of the cake. So besides myself as the lead author, and David, as the second author, we had an amazing research team. And each one had its, yeah, its specific role, I guess. Mm. So um, we had uh, Sigru, for example, from Pittsburgh campus, has uh, constructed an electronic coding environment that supported the coders, myself and, and Kira. Um, uh, Kira joined us as a curious a grad student, actually, from Pittsburgh, and in and, and no time became an, a master in coding Arab women and Arab news. Um, she was the student who managed in a very short time to surpass her teachers <laughs> and deservingly was rendered as a co-author. Okay. So she was, again, very, like, um, I guess, emerging Involved. as a straight out of university, effectively. Exactly. And, well, that's really encouraging. Yeah. I mean, do you think that... Um, I mean, f for you, obviously, it's it's an interest, and you're saying you're a feminist, you know, and and so it's quite a personal topic to you. Mm -hmm. And something that you said, like you've you've always for a long time, it's been there. You'd like to investigate this this That's topic. That's true. But you know what? The Arab woman is one of the central fault lines and the clash of civilization rhetoric um, between Islam and and the West. And I personally do not subscribe to this rhetoric or this paradigm. Moreover, I'm an Arab woman and a scholar, and I think it's my duty to attempt to address these faulty stereotypes. And at the same time, um, I'm a Western educated, um, and um, I think I should uh, converse with the West and educate them about us Arab women. Do you think that there is, I mean, well, as, as the book sets out <laughs> to demonstrate, really, um, there is misconceptions. Mm -hmm. There is really a portrait painted of, of Arab women that is just completely false. That's true and centuries and centuries of that, to say the truth. So um, um, will this work? Um, I guess, yes, interaction between human beings work, um, education um, will help in eroding those kind of misconceptions and stereotypes about us. Uh, media, of course, plays a major role. Mm. Uh, scholars like myself, especially that I'm writing in English, so I am in a way addressing the West, if you think about it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. on the front of it, because yeah. you would think, well, it's an English book, it's written for Western people, I guess, it's almost to pick it up off the shelf, and that maybe would be, mm -hmm. like you say, it's that connection. That's true. That new connection. Yeah. And, um, I mean, who do you think reader-wise, who do you imagine is going to perhaps pick up this book? Or who do you hope is going to pick up the book and, and, and read? Um, who's my audience? I had the West in mind when I wrote it. Um, one of my favorite writers um, is Edward Said. I'd like to follow his steps, to say the truth. And he's one of the people who um, advocated the right of the Palestinian you know, cause and, and the states, although he, he is a Palestinian, but he was not a Muslim, and he wrote you know, the question of Palestine and Islam and such. So I'd like to be Edward Said, yeah. <laughs> in a way. But again, um, I am a hybrid. I belong to this generation that speaks two languages mm. at the same time and, and mingle and code switch. So I am writing to my generation, the educated generation, and I hope that this is a book that could be taught in universities. And I've heard that some are interested in teaching it. I was, I was going to say, because um, I know, I was thinking of, of my sister, but she might be listening in England now, uh, it, and some of the studies that she did uh, for her master's and things, it actually ties in quite nicely. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Women in uh, diplomacy and all sorts of things like that. So kind of, and the I was thinking, topic. yeah, <laughs> I was like, she'd probably be quite interested to have a read when she comes to visit. I'd be like, you're going to read his book. Um, <laughs> So I, I agree that was going to be my next question, really, if you thought it could be integrated into educational uh, programs. And definitely, definitely. I teach a variety of um, courses in uh, Carnegie Mellon, um, creative writing courses, Islamic feminism, translation, what else? Um, and this actually could be a course that I teach next. Okay, so it definitely. could be open to here at, at uh, Carnegie Mellon, at Carnegie Mellon and be a subject yeah. that's coming your way soon. <laughs> um, uh, you mentioned as well, obviously, uh, the, the contribution to, of media when it comes to these representations. And also, um, did you say it was at 2000 that it started being, the, it started kind of developing, so you, the book started coming together in the sense of research, was it? Well, no, 2007. Okay, 2007. Mm -hmm. and, and it was obviously before recent um, occurrences yep. in, in the Middle East yep. and with the Arab Spring and things like that. I mean, how... Uh, do, you, do you think maybe people are more inclined now they, they would have a new interest perhaps because mm -hmm. women have been such a powerful um, tool really in this whole process Definitely. and it's becoming aware to you know to western audiences as well mm -hmm. 
of, of how kind of important and that Arab women aren't silent. Exactly, exactly. So I think social media did put women in the forefront of the news, especially during the Arabic, uh, Arab Spring, and made them, made them participants in the making of the news. This is what we call in the book uh, the source effect, when women are more frequently quoted as a part of the story, so making their voices a construction of the story. And this effect, as small as it, uh, may, it might seem, makes a huge contrast with pre-internet studies of Western news media where Arab women appear in, in image bites and voiceless you know uh, so uh, what i could say here is that internet services and and social media in general have made the voices of arab women much more prominent across all media not just just arab media yep so uh, widening up and obviously uh, twitter facebook exactly. everything like that it's yes. just uh, yes. one you know one comment whatever goes out there and it can be spread across the world uh, with millions of ears and eyes kind of listening and mm -hmm. watching so mm -hmm. really incredibly powerful um, and uh, through the research you've done, do you, so, I mean, do you think that it's going to be an evolving, um, the stereotype will change, will move, uh, I guess everything evolves, mm -hmm. but what, what do you kind of see next for this topic? You know, how do you see, if you're in the future, kind of revisit the the book and think if you were to rewrite <laughs> or, mm -hmm. you know, or to uh, to look at kind of the next chapter effectively, how do you personally see things things moving? Um. I don't know. I, I believe in the um, power of the written word. So I think books like this are important in changing those stereotypes and breaking them and confronting them, mm. um, speaking out, either as a scholar or as a woman. Mm. Yeah, this is a, a way of doing it as well. Education, education, education. Mm. Uh, education City is a good example of that. Bringing people from different parts of the world, from different cultures, mingling, uh, teaching them tolerance and how to speak to each other. It's very important. So you're uh, um, obviously very highly involved and, um, in Kazar Foundation with, with working here, with mm -hmm. uh, teaching here, and as a, a QF achiever. For those who don't know what a, a QF achiever is, could you tell us a little bit about it? Oh, so um, um, I was one of um, 10 or 12 QF achievers that were selected as achievers for their con uh, contribution. Um, I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm humbled to I say it. It must be a humbling yeah. experience exactly. because you kind of never want to blow your own trumpet, <laughs> as we say in England. Like you don't <laughs> really want to be kind of shouting your own phrases yeah, at all. Yeah. But um, one of the selected few. Did, uh, yeah, exactly. And uh, I, I, um, I'm very humbled by the selection. Um, it opened up um, different opportunities. Uh, you won't believe. Um, uh, the, the kind of attention, very positive attention and feedback I'm getting from uh, colleagues who never heard of me mm. before the campaign. Uh, from um, the States, I'm getting invited to speak in New York uh, as a keynote speaker and, you know, all other opportunities that would have not been possible if it wasn't for that, this campaign, to say the truth. And the book is now on sale. Yes. Um, so whereabouts, uh, is it internationally? Can people kind of, or can you order online? Or what's the best way to get your hands on a copy? If you're in Doha, uh, you can get a copy from Bloomsbury. Uh, if you're in the UK, um, uh, you can get a copy there from online or Bloomsbury Academic as well. Uh, if you're in the States, I think it will be out um, on Amazon next month. Exciting. Yes. Exciting times. <laughs> well, uh, congratulations. Thank you. And uh, we'll look forward to hearing about your future projects. And so, sorry, you said in, so in September. We're in launching at the Translation and Interpreting Institute, a very, very interesting um, a project. You won't believe how interested, uh, interested and excited I am. Uh, we're offering a master's degree. We're offering actually four master's degree, but we're offering the first master's degree in September 2012, uh, and it's going to be a master's in translation studies. Uh, we, uh, the institute will benefit from a language center that will offer certified language courses in English, Arabic, and French. Um, English, Arabic, Spanish, and French. Uh, we'll have a research center and a professional services center. So if you need anything translated, come to us. Wow, that's amazing. That's great. The news to me as well. You learn something new every day on QF Radio. <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll hear more about it. Uh, obviously, we're going to be going into the end of, uh, of term soon. Mm -hmm. Everyone's getting ready for their finals mm -hmm. and kind of uh, a bit stressed, I'm sure. Um, so when we get 
revved up into the new year, we'll uh, have to have you back in to, uh, yes, to like talk that. about that and uh, find out more information. Definitely. Well, congratulations thank on the you. book. And thank you so much for, for uh, coming and talking with us here on QF Radio this evening. Thank you for having me, Laura. Thank Thanks. you. OK, we'll go to a short break. Don't go anywhere. This is QF Radio on 93.7 FM.